So I'm here at the Eden Conference in Bruges, and I've got two great colleagues with me here. I've got Arena, who's our uh, current president, who's outgoing, and also Sandra, who is our president-elect. Can I ask you first, um, uh, I'll come to you, Arena. Can I ask you about your retrospective um, views on what you've achieved in the last three years as president? So first of all, uh, when my term of presidency started, I had a perfect uh, example and initiative that was started by previous presidents uh, to uh, unbundle a little bit governance structures, to reshape, rethink, uh, revision uh, the ways how we could uh, consolidate better the community. Um, during my introductory uh, speech in Budapest in 2016, I addressed uh, the community asking uh, to support me in this matter. And of course we started with the board, with the executive committee, thinking about uh, new internal structures that would facilitate uh, this development and this uh, reshaping a little bit of uh, consolidated actions. And I think that was successful uh, because we agreed that uh, we do it collaboratively, thoughtfully, as always in Eden, uh, but always taking risks. And uh, in order to make the final decision, we would uh, um, recheck, uh, revisit the opinion of the community uh, and first of all fellows and senior fellows. So following uh, these processes I think one of the uh, best establishment during the last uh, three years was consolidation of Eden Fellowship. Now we have the Council of Eden Fellows, we have the board who actually leads uh, the ideas into projects and then calls out for community members to join. The second thing is uh, we wanted to investigate what works in terms of application of technologies in education, uh, which innovations that come from European and global scope might be experimented, piloted, and then which experts from Eden community should be addressed mm. in order to provide opinion, consultation, mm. remarks. So we selected several of them that were in line, actually, we were happy enough uh, to be a member of um, ET 2020 Education Policy Framework. So we in, were in line to see how these initiatives develop, like new formats of recognition, credentialization of learning, and how Eden uh, should position itself as the community of experts, a network of academics and professionals to facilitate these movements. So I would highlight these two uh, main uh, streams of activities, I think, that uh, were the focus during my presidency. And collaboratively, we did this, I think, in a quite successful step forward. So Sandra, you have some big shoes to fill now because you have to take over as president now of Eden and for the next three years, I'd like to know what you think uh, Eden will achieve, what, what, what are your plans for the organisation? Well, um, I've been happy to be able to continue what Irina has started because uh, you cannot finish everything in a short, short period of time, so uh, we set a really good path and uh, I plan to continue with this. Uh, but only to, and also to see, uh, as you know, times are changing quite rapidly and uh, what we are talking about today it may be not be tomorrow, but with such a large community, uh, I think we have enough to see what's going to be and what's going on and Eden is quite solid. Uh, and I think uh, it can stay solid in a way that it takes what's the best and appropriate and put it on the market, you know, as advice, as, as opportunity together. Uh, so I'm going to see that we continue with these initiatives we have been started and also to see how we can enhance the visibility of Eden in a way that what we produce, what we gather, what we collect is more available to everyone. Because today uh, information 
uh, is very much present if you have information, you have the power. Uh, but what kind of information, which information is good? We lots have a fake news and things like that. So uh, Eden as a community can contribute to that because when you come to Eden, you know that you will get good information from the professionals. And in that way, I want Eden to be a place where you can come to and find the right information and we are able to collect these informations. So Eden, the D in Eden stands for distance, but there is this possibility that maybe distance doesn't exist anymore because of technology. What would be your views on the idea of distance education? Is it something that is no past? In my opinion, it exists. I think the concept of a distance transformed, and Michael Moore, I think, was also talking about that some time ago. Now we have other uh, dimensions of distance, not geographical dimensions, but time, uh, occupation, attention, uh, depth, uh, and uh, different, different other things that um, help us to understand diversification which happens in the society. And uh, if we support education organizations and education providers in terms of working with the unbundled, unbundled society members and uh, uh, working in the networks that are expanding, self-expanding and uh, uh, turning into new structures. I think distance is the right word. I would keep it. So uh, would you agree with that or would you disagree with that, Sandra? Well, um, I think that we have to look uh, today as a distance as something very present and part of our everyday life. It's not uh, anymore something exotic we have been talking about before. It's like you're talking learning and e-learning. What's the difference, you know, actually this e is just standing out as a fashion, you know. Now. So um, a distance is very much present and we have to think about how to integrate uh, all that comes with this way of uh, education, recognition, uh, awareness of possibilities of such education. So uh, this education is becoming the part, part of normal way of learning. Uh, we do not tend anymore to go to the campus, for example, to, to, to study. We like to do it from the home or wherever the, we want. So uh, distance is a, is a name that will stay as a name, not as, as a, the way of learning. Irina, Sandra, thank you very much for your time.